This is the story of an old lady, deeply damaged, but still standing tall with her two towers. This building project began in the second half of the 12th century, now starting up afresh after the terrible fire of April 15, 2019. Beyond the scars of the disaster, Notre Dame is revealing some interesting aspects of its architecture never seen before. Today, a huge scientific investigation is mobilizing teams who specialize in materials, including the stone and iron forming the cathedral skeleton. They try to understand how the 12th and 13th century builders managed to erect a cathedral far higher than its contemporaries and to guide the architects overseeing its current restoration. To collect clues about the secrets of Notre Dame's construction, archaeologist Maxime Leretier, head of the scientific project's metalworking group, has had to explore every nook and cranny of the cathedral. The collapse of the spire and the roof structure brought to light some unexpected metal elements inserted into the stone structure of the building, iron staples. The framework was supported by these staples. This was one of the discoveries we made about the use of metal in Notre Dame after the fire. The metalworking group discovered many such series of staples at the top of the walls of Notre Dame, in the chapels and side aisles, and even in the galleries on the first level of the building. These metal reinforcements are no doubt only the tip of the iceberg of a gigantic iron skeleton. To reveal how far metal was used in the structure of Notre Dame, the scientists use a metal detector that pinpoints elements still hidden by the stones. This is only the beginning of the restoration work. But it seems clear that the architect was experimenting with building a taller, more daring structure than its contemporaries and wanted to strengthen it by using iron in the different levels right from the outset. While Maxime Leretier and his team continue to search for traces of metal in the stone structure, another team is at work 30 meters above them. The gigantic scaffolding set up inside the building enables the stoneworking group to study a previously inaccessible treasure, the Vault of Notre Dame. This structure was particularly weakened by the fire and the details of its construction are still unknown. The team of art historians and civil engineering specialists are taking samples from it with immense care perforating various architectural elements with a core drill to obtain samples of mortar, a mixture used by masons to bind the stones together. These mortar samples will help us in several areas. We already have various samples enabling us to compare the mortars used in the 12th and 13th centuries and the mortars visible on the surface. We will also be able to make comparisons by taking samples from an ogive, a transverse rib, or a vault segment. These different mortar joints play different roles in the structure, so one of the questions we're trying to answer is whether we'll use the same mortar in these different places to play different roles. While mortar coring is carried out sparingly to avoid damaging these structures, which are over 800 years old, the Stone Group can rely on another source to gather data, the huge collection of remains laid out in the Cathedral Square. This is where the debris recovered from inside the building was brought after the fire. A few meters away, art historian Yves Gallet is faced with a real archaeological puzzle. The head of the Stone Group is looking at a set of arch stones, the blocks forming the arch of the nave, that were found scattered on the ground after its collapse. Using invaluable photo archives, the art historian and his team are trying to reconstruct this arch by assembling the blocks. Now, they can also study in detail the sides of these stones previously hidden by the cathedral structure. These sides still bear the imprint of builder's tools and marks that might indicate the positioning of the stone when the arch was laid. It is extremely useful to be able to examine all sides of these blocks because our predecessors never could. These are facets that have not been seen since the 12th or 13th century. And then for Gothic architecture historians and the archaeologists who work on the construction of these big buildings, it's like reading an open book. 
This is the bright side of this terrible fire. For the first time, we can look at every detail of the cathedral. Our aim is to understand how this structure was designed and built, and to help the chief architects carry out restoration work that as far as possible respects the original construction, as well as the methods, thinking and gestures of medieval people. These arch stones provide an opportunity for scientists to take mortar samples without altering the structure of the building. To discover the recipe for these medieval mortars, we'll follow the samples to the city of Nancy. In the laboratories of the University of Lorraine and Jean Lemoy Institute, researchers are analyzing these mortars to find out what they contain. As there are very few samples, Jean-Michel Micheling and his colleagues make a 3D reconstruction of them with a tomograph then reduce the mortars to powder for in-depth analysis. Under the microscope, the mortar pore structure, quartz grains, and lime modules can be seen, traces of a mixture probably made in the 12th century. Mortar is a mixture of water, sand, and binder. The binders in Notre Dame are lime-based, and some are gypsum-based. The mortars create cohesion between the stone blocks, and we can also assume that they are a medium for distributing the forces in the structure evenly, right down to the building's foundations. In the lab, various instruments are used with the mortar samples to analyze the elemental chemistry of the material, pinpoint a characteristic signature in these mortars, and quantify certain crystals in order to try to reconstitute the original formula. The initial results indicate that these mortars are relatively homogeneous and that particularly thin joints were used by the masons, which could make the structure of the stone arch stronger. We will try to reproduce various mortars, for example, to see how the hardening or drying process changes during the first weeks or months. For instance, our archaeologist colleagues would like to know how soon the framework can be removed from an arch once it is finished, for instance. We hope this kind of approach will provide additional information so that we can understand a little better how a cathedral was built in the Middle Ages. While waiting to see what effect time has on these reconstructed mortars, the Notre Dame scientific project is also looking at the metal samples collected from the cathedral. Within the Archaeomaterials Research Institute in Saclay, scientists are taking cuts from the iron staples, which are then polished and etched with a regent to reveal their structure. Especially the steel zones, which contain traces of carbon and will enable the samples to be dated. An important initial question about the metal is when it was placed in the cathedral. Was it installed in the Middle Ages when the monument was built or by Viollet-le-Duc during the 19th century restorations? We know that Viollet-le-Duc used metal. It can be pinpointed in certain places, but we are finding much more than what he added to the cathedral. We are very excited right now because we are getting the first dates which corroborate the fact that all the staples in the galleries really were put in when the cathedral was built. This makes it one of the earliest uses of iron in Gothic architecture. By analyzing impurities in the metal, we can trace the chemical signature of this metal, which is a real fingerprint of the composition of the ore used to obtain it. We can then carry out an investigation by making comparisons with the chemical signatures of different production sites we have collected in a database in our lab. Under the microscope, the samples show weld lines indicating that the smiths assembled three different pieces of metal to make this iron staple. Chemical analysis confirms that the middle piece has a different composition from the two surrounding it. They do not come from the same ore. In the Middle Ages, people did not glorify new materials. Even at a large construction site, like Notre Dame, that had the means to invest in new materials, the most high-tech materials possible, no matter the cost. The question of supplies encompass any possibility. New materials, maybe, but also a certain amount of recycling, because this was a normal source of supplies. This lab research is only just beginning to shed new light on the history of the Notre Dame site. The data will also provide food for thought for the contracting authority and the project manager.
The EPRNDP, public establishment in charge of the conservation and restoration of Notre Dame Cathedral, Paris. So that science can help this Gothic phoenix to rise from its ashes.